Hello, and welcome to TED Talks. Our security edition today is focused on ES and ITSI sitting in a tree. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars focused on features and best practices. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these tips and tricks, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. I'm Haru Camacho, a security product marketing specialist here at Splunk. I'm excited to share how your team can use notable events to improve security and IT collaboration. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Chris Crocco. Thanks, Yaro. Hi, I'm Chris Crocco, a consulting solutions engineer here at Splunk. My primary focus is ITO, DevOps, and collaboration, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. Great. Thanks, Chris. Today we are going to be discussing the growing need for tighter collaboration between security and IT, the steps your team can take to foster a stronger relationship between these teams, and Chris is going to walk us through a great demo illustrating the value of ES and ITSI cohesion. And then we will cover additional resources available to help you take advantage of these capabilities within Splunk Enterprise Security. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout the TED, the TED Talk over the Q&A feature. And if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Splunk Community website for any follow-up questions. The first question many of you are probably asking is, why should I do this? Which is an important place to start. The answer is that we see a rapid evolution of the IT and development landscape, and we are also seeing a need for IT and security operations to adjust to these new challenges. There are new customers, both internal to the organization and external, that have new and more demanding requirements. The infrastructure that IT and security are responsible for keeping secure and available is shifting to the cloud, and the proliferation of connected devices and third-party software not only expands the technology footprint of a company, but changes what operational teams' res responsibilities are dramatically. This isn't to say that there is no longer a need for security or IT operations. Quite the opposite. The complex and changing nature of security threats still requires a deep level of understanding on how to detect and remove threats quickly before they compromise an organization's assets. While developers may be taking a larger stake in the operations of what the code they deploy, IT operations is still essential in ensuring that the underlying network, database, and other crucial infrastructure is available and resilient. Neither of these important operational teams can replace the other. There's simply too much for one group to be the master of all. And both security and IT operations automate well-known tasks using SOAR and OR approaches, but the understanding of what these playbooks are fixing needs to come from the past experience that exists in these verticals. Even with both security ops and IT ops having distinct responsibilities to the business, all of the change we've been talking about also presents an opportunity for security and IT operations to collaborate in ways that they haven't before. This allows IT to benefit from the strategic awareness that security is bringing to the table, while IT operations can provide security with the business context for better understanding of root cause and response ownership. This collaboration strengthens the overlapping responsibilities of both groups, allowing for more timely and thorough response to events. Next, let's take a look at a breakdown of the security and IT operations responsibilities to see where this collaborative activity can be of the most benefit. As you can see, both groups have different approaches to infrastructure and assets, security taking a proactive approach to ensuring business integrity, and IT operations generally being more reactive to ensure business service availability. We also see a few common areas of responsibility and performance metrics, so let's focus on those for our talk today. So all of this talk about security and IT operations collaboration is nice and all, but what do we actually do about it? Well, as we saw in this breakdown, both groups are responsible for event management, 
and have a performance KPI of MTTR, or mean time to resolution, that is directly associated with that activity. This is where collaboration has the most potential benef benefit, so let's focus there. As we start down the road of collaborative event management, let's talk about some best practices to ensure that this work becomes a regular process within your organization and you see the maximum benefit from this effort. First, make sure that the MTTD, or Mean Time to Detect, and MTTR, Mean Time to Resolution SLOs, for each group are shared and understood. IT might have a tighter window to resolve performance impacting issues, while security's detection times could be very different based on the nature of threats in the environment. Next, make sure that the right people from security and IT ops establish regular communication on collaborative efforts. This should be people who have domain expertise and can also implement changes based on the outcome of collaborative work. We know that security and IT operations are very often looking at the same entities in the environment, so it's crucial to compare what each group is looking at to find gaps and prioritize specific infrastructure. Of course, we don't want to let everyone see what's behind the security curtain, so make sure that existing RBAC policies are used as a guideline for what notable events get shared. And finally, once the people and process for this collaboration have been established, make sure that it becomes a regular part of continuous improvement pipelines so event management becomes even more efficient as time goes on. Now, let's take a look at the artifacts from ITSI that can be helpful for security ops teams to be aware of. Maintenance windows can provide context for changes to assets that result in security events or vulnerabilities. Sometimes, customers know about issues before you do, and episodes and activity that are based on customer-generated KPIs can also inform you of the end-user impact of a security event. If there are episodes or notable events that are focused on specific pieces of infrastructure, they may also be related to assets that are being presented in enterprise security. And finally, if there are existing incident tickets and alert actions that are being tracked in ITSI, you can use that information to expand on your security tickets and reporting, as well as identify potential resources to engage in remediation efforts. IT operations can also benefit from receiving specific information from enterprise security. Adaptive response actions can be the cause of changes to ITSI KPIs and episodes and can help IT operations determine if they need to take additional action. If other remediation activities have been taken against IT infrastructure, this is another piece of contextual information that helps IT reduce MTTR of events. Knowing whether the security team is looking at the same entities as you are can be hugely helpful to IT ops and helps get the right resources engaged to solve problems. And similarly to security, IT operations can use a subset of security ticket information for reporting and incident updates to ensure that leadership is aware of who is working on what. Now that we've gone over what to implement, let's talk about how easy it is to get ES and ITSI talking to each other using the power of the underlying core Splunk platform. One of the advantages of using Splunk solutions is having a common location for data in the index tier. By publishing the relevant data from enterprise security and IT service intelligence into summary indexes that are sent to the indexers, you can easily make the right data available for consumption by the other team. To do this, someone with an ESS admin or ITOA admin role who also has write index permissions on the search heads, will create a new summary index using the documented process. Next, write scheduled searches to return the necessary data from enterprise security or ITSI and write to the newly created summary index. These searches can run at a different interval based on how quickly that information is needed in the other solution. Remember to use the collaborative process and RBAC policies we discussed earlier to determine what is appropriate to add to that summary index from the KB stores and indexes that exist in ES and ITSI. 
Next, make sure that the summary index is added to the indexes.conf file on the indexers by your Splunk admins or Splunk Cloud support. Finally, revise the appropriate output.conf file on your search heads to allow for the local summary index to be sent to the indexers. That's it. Pretty easy, right? Now that the summary index is available to consume in the opposite application, it's time to add correlation searches that will present the data to your operators and analysts. First, make sure that you can see the summary index you need from Enterprise Security or ITSI. Next, follow the standard process for creating and saving a new correlation search in your respective application. For Enterprise Security notables, make sure that you update any incident review settings that may be needed. And the same for aggregation policies in ITSI, so that notable events will appear in the correct episodes. So now let's see what this actually looks like out in the wild with a quick demo. Let's focus on a scenario where the SOC is interested in receiving maintenance window information from ITSI to correlate IT ops activities with other notable events. Here, in my ITSI search head, you can see we have a maintenance window that was recently completed. Let's make sure that the SOC knows about it too. To do this, we are going to run a REST command against the ITSI maintenance window endpoint to pull data from the appropriate KV store. Next. We're going to table out the fields that were defined as relevant for SOC activities during our recent collaboration review between security and IT operations. This step isn't mandatory, but helps to ensure that the users of the opposite app don't have to do too much digging to get what they need. Finally, we use the collect command to send the results to the custom summary index that was created for the security team. Notice that I'm also defining the stash source time which is the default source type for summary indexes, which are not counted towards your license volume. I've also scheduled this search to run as a report every five minutes, which will publish new results to the index as they're created. We can use a similar approach for pulling data out of the, from out-of-the-box ITSI indexes. In this search, we're pulling SNMP trap alerts from the ITSI tracked alerts index, and in addition, we're renaming the entity title field to asset to match the assets that will exist in enterprise security. We're also using the power of SPL to join the value of the metric name field and the value field to create entirely new key value pairs. Man, schema at search time's cool. Anyway, now we can follow the same process of defining the fields that are important to the security team and sending all of this to the summary index. Now, let's make sure that this index is in the indexes.conf that my search peers will be using. If you are a Splunk Cloud customer, this step will be done for you. Just submit a cl uh, cloud request with the details of the summary index that you want to have added, and they'll help you out. Pivoting to our enterprise security search head, we can now confirm that the summary index from the ITSI side of things is searchable from the security side of the house. This is awesome. And now, we can use this index to create a new correlation search. In this case, we're creating a correlation search to identify maintenance windows that are specific to port changes, as this can create network vulnerabilities. Now, my only adaptive response action will be to create a notable event and associate that with the network security domain. I can also adjust the assets and identities to map to the ITSI entity information that has been configured in enterprise security. Now that that's done, let's go see what we have in incident review. It seems like there's an increase in unroutable activity going on for this host 10.141.2.170 today, which can be an indication of IP spoofing or something else nasty going on. I can see that there was a high risk ITSI maintenance window initiated right about the same time. So let's see if that had anything to do with it. All right, it looks like someone in IT ops named Jay Pesto submitted a maintenance window. And if I look at the original event, it looks like it was changing port configs on a border router 
so that the new payment app traffic can be routed. That's good to know, but I'm also seeing lots of unroutable uh, traffic activity at the same time. I wonder if the NOC is aware of this. Let me shoot them a quick Splunk on-call notification. Nick, my favorite team lead. How are you, man? Hey, Chris, my man. How are things in security land? I'm guessing since you pinged me, something went bump in the night. Yeah, sorry, man. It looks like uh, one of the maintenance windows listed in ITSI might be allowing some bad actors to try and route traffic to some IPs they shouldn't through one of our border routers. Can you uh, take a look and see if we can roll that back? Of course, buddy. Our glass table for infrastructure performance looks pretty good. It doesn't seem like whatever is going on is impacting customers, so that's good. Let me check out episode review. Oh, there we go. I'm seeing what you're talking about now. Unroutable activity on 10.141.2.170, right? Yep, that's the one. Okay, cool. Let me check a few things here. I see that the notable events for the SOC team kicked off right around the start and end for this maintenance window. That would make sense. Just to make sure I'm not poking bears, let me see if anyone is already working on this. Yep, it looks like it was already escalated to Jimmy for a rollback procedure. And there is a ServiceNow ticket open too, ticket number 129860. Do you want us to shoot you an email or something when that's updated or resolved? No, I'll just be able to see it in ES. Speaking of which, how did you know which host I was talking about? Oh. Well, Chris, remember last week when the ops team leads to the collaboration session? One of the things that came out of that session is the way we are getting some of the notable events from ES related to network activity now. They created this new index called ES Sharing is Caring. Doesn't that just make you feel loved, Chris? Anyway, we made a few correlation searches in our end, so now we can do things like this rollback without you having to call us about it. Oh, nice. Well, I guess that frees up a few more coffee breaks for me during the day. Uh, speaking of which, it's time for a new cup for me. Thanks, Nick. Have a good one. Thanks, Chris. We have some great resources available here for you to learn more about using notable events to strengthen the relationship between security and ITSI. Check out the documentation section. It's filled with great insights. All of these resources and the recording of this webinar will be sent to you in a follow-up email. Don't forget, we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community website, where there is a Q&A section that you can use to learn more about how notable events can enhance collaboration between security and ITSI. Feel free to participate in the new discussion section with security TED Talks, and finally, Splunk Ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future TED Talks. We are excited to share this series with you. Thank you again.